afternoon. How y'all doing? Good, good. How you doing, sis? Good, good, good. good. The Sabbath day, it means something. It stands for something. It stands for the final rest that we're going to receive as a people when we finally stand up and shake ourselves from the dust. And we come back to God how he want us to. And that's why we're here. We're here to say, listen, learn the laws of God. Obey God. Don't obey me. Don't give me no money. I don't want no money. All I want is you to read. All I want is you to see what's in this Bible and see if what I'm saying is factual or not. You lost your identity. What was your identity before African American? What did you speak? What foods did you eat? What customs did you keep? What was your arts? What God did you serve? But it's gonna take men to do what? Get they self in order so that they woman could have no other choice and option but to respect them. Shalom, shalom, everybody. That means peace be unto you. We try to uh, follow the Bible as much as possible, right? And me simply greeting you guys with a, a greeting of peace, that shows what I'm about. I'm about peace, right? As a nation of people, do y'all think we got peace? Do y'all think we practice peace, one amongst another? Who do you say we are as a people? Matter of fact, who are we? If you guys were to fill out an application for whatever, and that application asks you, what's your nationality? What would you say, sister sitting right here by the window? What would you say your nationality is? African American? My little brother. How about you? What's your, what's your nationality? Same thing? African American black? How about you, my brother, with the blue hat? Other. Other? OK. How about you? Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican? So our brother too. How about you? Uh, rich, right? Yeah, black. You're black? Yeah, I'm just you Okay. My brother sitting here getting his hair cut by Rich? I don't know about that application. Okay. What would you describe your nationality as? Uh, I'm Jamaican. Question, Question mark. Question mark? Because it's unknown. You don't know really. Right. Okay. Are uh, you two over in the corner? Start with my brother standing up. What would you say your nationality is? African-American. African -American. How about you, sis? I'll say other. Other? OK, so we all look alike, right? We all look alike, even though my brother say he's Puerto Rican. He's the same as the sister who says she's African-American, right? The only difference is a boat stop, right? Some of us may even be Native American Indian. All right, but through all the mingling and co mixing, there's some confusion in who we truly are. But the Lord actually says that there is no confusion in His works, in His dealings. Right? So, who are we? We are the Israelites, right? We are the Israelites according to the Bible, and some things happened to those Israelites over the course of years. One of the things that happened to the Israelites is they lost their identity. The Israelites today will tell you that they're African American, that they're black. They would never tell you that they are Jews. And that's prophesied in the Bible. But to clear up the confusion, let's go to Numbers. Numbers chapter 1 and verse 18. When you get it, go ahead and read it. Who are we? We are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Anybody ever heard that before today? Being called a lost tribes of the nation of Israel? I know he have. David been working with him. Nobody else? You ain't even considered, hey, I'm a, I'm a Jew. No, you ain't, you, ain't, you ain't, nobody ever considered that. Before I heard that information, I never considered that I was a Jew. Go ahead and read that and then go to Isaiah. Yeah. But read this. The book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 8, 18. Uh-huh. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families. 
by the house of their fathers. So if anybody know anything about dog breeding, the word pedigree is used in dog breeding. And the word pedigree refers to your lineage, your bloodline, who you are, right? So our forefathers, they determine their pedigree or they determine their lineage based off of what? Whoever their father was. So if your father was a so-called African-American, guess what you would be? Sis? Right. There's actually no such thing as mixing. Like an African-American with a white person and they co-mingle and make a baby, the baby's not mixed. The baby is whatever the father was. So if the, the, the father was a so-called Caucasian, the child would be a Caucasian. Regardless of what the mother is, they determine their lineage by their fathers. So my brother um, from Puerto Rico, you from Puerto Rico or are you born here? Born here? What was your father? Was he Puerto Rican or black? He was Puerto Rican. He Puerto Rican. Both your mom and dad Puerto Rican, right? No, my mom's black. Your mom black. So you're not mixed. You are whatever your father is. And the Bible that calls the tribe of uh, Ephraim, today they're known as Puerto Rican. All right, let's go to Isaiah 1 and 3, all right? The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. This is going to harken back to what I stated earlier about you didn't even recognize or even think to consider to call yourself a Jew. Read. The ox knoweth his owner, uh -huh. and the ass his master's crib. Yep. But Israel doeth not know, uh -huh. my people doeth not consider. Read that again. The ox knoweth his owner. This is a very strong animal, right? A capable animal, but read. And the ass, his master's crib. Another animal. He's a hard worker. So the, these animals know who their master is, and they know where their home is. But what about the children of Israel? Let's hear what's stated about the children of Israel. Read. But Israel. Who? Israel. You African Americans. You so-called Puerto Ricans. You blacks. You others. You question marks. You what? Israel. Uh huh. Was not considered. Uh huh. My people do it not consider. You missed the point where it said they does not know. But Israel do it not know. They don't know who they are. The ass and the donkey know where their master's crib is and who their master is. But the Bible said Israel don't know. Who today don't really know who they are? My brother said question mark. My sister said African American. African American is not found in the Bible. Other is not found in the Bible. Israel is found in the Bible. Before the day, y'all was not considering that y'all was Jews. Why is that? Why are you guys calling yourselves other names outside of the names that the Lord actually called you? He called you guys the tribes of Judah or the tribe of Gad, the tribe of Manasseh, the tribe of Ephraim. He called you these things. He didn't call you others. What happened? Let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. The book of Deuteronomy. It's important for us to know who we are, which is why I'm going to these scriptures to show y'all that y'all Israel. If I was a firefighter, right, and I had a firefighter's costume or, or uniform in my closet, and I woke up with a, a case of amnesia, and I put on that outfit, where am I going? I know, I'm gotta, I, know I gotta go to work, but I don't know what this uniform is for. What am I supposed to be doing after I put this uniform on? Your identity gives you purpose. If you don't know who you are, you don't know what your purpose is. If you're claiming that you're other, if you're claiming that you're African American, that's really no purpose for you. The purpose that was set up and designed for the Israelites is to govern themselves according to these holy laws so that we can reap the benefits of all the resources in this earth. The Lord tried to give us these, these resources and these benefits that we could claim ourselves to be kings being in control of, but we floundered it or we what, what, what squandered it. We squandered the possession. And now others are in possession of our heritage. Because we don't know who we are, we call ourselves African Americans. We don't hold ourselves to any standard. We, hold our, we call ourselves Puerto Rican. We don't know who we are. We don't hold ourselves to any standard. So it's hard for us to tell a brother or sister when they're in the wrong. It's hard for us to tell a, a, a brother or sister, God don't like this. Right. Why? Because we don't understand why he don't like it. He don't like it because you are taking away your heritage. You are taking away the history that I gave you. He gave us a blessing. 
The Lord gave us a blessing in calling us Israel. But when we call ourselves African American, there's no blessing in that. We, let's see what happened. Why are we calling ourselves other names other than what the Lord called us? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Read. But it shall come to pass. It's going to happen. A future prophecy. If thou wilt not hearken. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel after they came out of captivity in Egypt. Anybody familiar with that history? Any, okay. If you're not, I'm going to give you a brief history of it. The children of Israel served captivity in Egypt. That's why a lot of people, a lot of black people like to say, I'm from Egypt. Yeah, we were in Egypt at one point in time, but we are not the Egyptians who were ruling. We were in Egypt as the servants and the slaves. So Moses is telling them same servants and slaves after they were freed from bondage, listen to the Lord. It's best that you listen, because if you don't, I'm going to spill out some evil things that's going to happen to you. Right? Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God uh -huh. to observe, to do all his commandments. Some of the commandments. All his commandments. We are commanded to follow the commandments. There are more than 10 commandments. Moses went up to the mount with the Lord and was gone for 40 days. Surely he told him more than 10 commandments in those 40 days. Read. And his statutes. And his statutes. Those statutes are sub-laws. Read. Which I command thee this day. Uh-huh. That all these curses mm -hmm. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Go to verse 37. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Read it again. And thou shall become an astonishment. You, you who are listening, the Lord said you will become an astonishment. Or what else? A proverb. A proverb. What else? In a byword. A byword. A byword is a word or a name called outside of the name God gave you. God gave you Israel, but you calling yourselves others or unknown or African American, Indian, Puerto Rican, that's a byword. The Lord said you would be known by these different things. Why? Why would we be known by these different things? It just stated in verse 15. Because we disobeyed our father. Go give me all Leviticus 19. It's my responsibility to make sure that my brothers and sisters that I can reach, that they walk on the right path. That's my responsibility. Right? Christ came and he fulfilled that responsibility. And he showed us to the death, this is how you walk. You love your brothers, you love yourself. We're not doing that today. Even if it pains you, even if it kills you, love your brother as you love yourself. Right? Don't allow yourself to get so riled up in emotion that you want to exact revenge for yourself. No, the Lord said vengeance is mine. Let the Lord take care of vengeance. But it's not on us to exact revenge, it's on us to keep our brothers and sisters accountable and tell them the behavior that you're following leads to death. It leads to the continuing of the destruction of our nation, right? Read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Right. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Uh-huh. And not suffer sin upon thee. You hear that? Rebuke your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Do not suffer sin upon him. Read it again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So your heart is your mind. The Lord said, don't secretly hate your brother. How do you secretly hate your brother? You secretly hate your brother by how? Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. In any wise, instead of hating your brother secretly, right, correct him. To rebuke is to correct. Hey, bro, you, um, you, 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 you're not keeping the Sabbath day holy. The Lord said you're supposed to keep the Sabbath day holy by honoring him on his day that he set aside for to be honored. Right. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, you got all those days to do anything you want to do as far as getting your money concerned, right. as far as cooking hot meals is concerned. But brother, you are in violation of the law. And it's my job to show you, listen, let's get this in order so that the Lord can continue fighting for us. Right now, do anybody think the Lord fighting for us? He's allowing... No, you're not. He's allowing our children to be killed in the streets. He's allowing the, 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 the politicians to do what? Run game on us. 
because we put a lot of faith and trust in politicians, thinking if we vote, we can vote our way out of the hell that we in. We've been doing that for the longest. We done flipped Republican, Democrat, back to Republican. We done did a lot of trusting in this system because we, we, we need somebody to fight for us. Who is our representative in the United Nations? In the World Council of Nations, who is our representation? Who represents the, the, the needs of us and speaks up for us? What are our needs? What do we need? What do we want? What are we looking for out of life? Who are our leaders? Well, what should we be teaching? I mean, I understand that we have purpose and there's some things that we put us on the right path. What should we be teaching? We don't even know what to teach. <laughs> well, it's important. You know, we don't we know what to see. That's the destruction that the Lord said was going to happen to us. Hold this. Hold it. Go to Hosea 4 and 6. That's the destruction that was going to happen. We so to a point, and then give me Isaiah 51 and 20. We so to a point where we just waiting for the night to come so that the morning can come. And after that, the night can come again so that these days can hurry up and go back. Because we ain't got a purpose here. But let's read this. The book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 6. Read. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, saying thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. We have to come out of the state of destruction that we are in. The only way we can come out of the state of destruction that we're in, being the lowest, being the most looked over, being the most lied to, right? We have to come back to the remembrance of who we are and how we're supposed to serve our Lord. Remember the law of God. It's written right here. Keep reading. Or read it again. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You mean all people. My people. You hear that? The Lord specifically talking to his people, you Israelites. He's saying you guys are destroyed. How are you destroyed? Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. You reject knowledge. We reject not getting high. We say we can do what we want. This is our body. We only live once. This is our life. Let's live it to the fullest. No, this is not the only time we live it. Right? That's a little heavy. But in the Bible, it talks about us not only being here once, but we're here different times. Some people in the world might call it reincarnation, but in the Bible, we know it to be regeneration. In reincarnation, they tell you that you can come back as a butterfly, as a cow, as a woman. If you was a man, no, regeneration. You as a man living in this life, you're going to come back as a man in the next life. Right? And based on how you lived your life previously, you're going to suffer for it in the future. Right? So read that again. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Uh huh. I will also reject thee. And the Lord has rejected us. So that what? That thou shalt be no priest to me. Nobody special. We ain't nobody special right now. Give me Isaiah 51 and 20. We are no one special. They look at us and say, oh yeah, that's a vote. That's a vote. That's a body. That's, that's a paycheck. We are a check. We are a prey. We, 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 what you, we what you call a booty. When I, say a, when I say a booty, I mean we are a spoil suited to be plundered. You know what I mean? Like, we are prisoners of war. We didn't ask to be here. Why are we here in America in the first place? How do we come here? What do they tell us our history started with? My brother in the corner. How, how does our history start? In, in February, we just came out of Black History Month. When they taught us in school, where do they start our history at? How do we get here into America? Okay. How do, what, what was our position here in America? In Puerto Rico, right? What was our position in Puerto Rico? Why do they call Puerto Rico Puerto Rico? What does the name Puerto Rico mean? Rich ports, a port of riches. Are you a, are you a rich port? Are you a port of riches? No, you're not. You're a man. You're not a port. 
You know what I mean? You're called after what they described a land to be. So I say all that to say, we are a reflection of how we were based in this society. We are the Lord's, we've been spoiled. That's what we have been made to become. And the Lord is calling for us to do what? To stand up, to recognize that we fail, to recognize that we stopped keeping his commandments, to recognize that we broke the covenant and that there's something that we have to do. There's something that we have to do to be recognized again in God's eyes, to get his favor once more. Now, I'm going to read this scripture, but I want to hear what it is. No, I was, it was just a question. It's, it's the subject matter. Mm -hmm. I'm saying because of our disobedience, or our ignorance, or our lack of knowledge, or even seeking knowledge, is that why our women is, is, is so, you know, hateful towards us? Mm -hmm. I mean, because they don't like us. They don't respect us. Mm -hmm. Is it because of our disobedience to God? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's because we're not fulfilling all that we should be as a man? I mean, is that one of the main reasons why women are saying it's so hateful towards us? And I don't say disobedience. You know what I'm saying? I say That's what it is. That, yeah, I understand yeah. that. But, 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 but there's something I was asking. Is, is that one of the causes mm -hmm. because of our disobedience, mm -hmm. because of our lack of seeking God? Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, is, is that one of the causes? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's an order. Right, the Lord set up order. We can go to Corinthians and see the order, and Genesis to see the order. But first, we're gonna read that. We're gonna jump to Corinthians, then jump to Genesis. We're gonna ask this question. Read that real quick. The book of Isaiah, chapter fifty-one and verse twenty. Uh huh. Thy sons have fainted; mm -hmm. they lie at the head of all the streets. What's the first verse of the next chapter? The book of Isaiah, chapter fifty-two. In verse 2. Read. Shake thyself from the dust. Shake thyself from the dust. This is a call to the children of Israel. Shake yourself from the dust. If you have dust on you and you got to shake yourself from the dust, where have you been? You've been down. You've been the lowest. It's metaphorical talk. You know how we are. We speak metaphorically a lot of times. We'll say one thing, but it really means something else. And you found it a lot in the scripture. I think what's that, Job? 14 that talks about it, 14 and 6 maybe? What'd it say? Job 29. Read that. The book of Job, chapter 11 and verse 6. Uh-huh. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. Or he would show thee. That they are double to that which is. Uh-huh. Know therefore that God exacted of thee less than thine iniquity deserves. So what I want is in the beginning. Read that again one more time. And he, and that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. What I'm trying to do right here today is show the secrets of wisdom, right? The secrets that have been hidden in here. What do these scriptures actually mean? Because a lot of us, we open the Bible up and we read it, and it looked like gibberish. It looked like we can't even put ourselves in the Bible, right? So it's secrets here that has been revealed. The Lord said he's going to do that for each and every one of us. Read. That they are double. They are what? That they are double. They are double. Sometimes you will see something on the surface that say one thing, but there's a deeper meaning to it. Just like metaphors or similes, likes and asses, right? That's how we're talking. That's what we're reading in the Bible. When we go to Isaiah 51, it says, shake thyself from the dust. We ain't really dirty. Mentally, we are destroyed. Mentally, we have been made the lowest. Go back to Isaiah and let's continue reading that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 52 and verse 2. Read. Shake thyself from the dust. Mm -hmm. Arise and sit down, Jerusalem. Ar arise. Come up out of the squalor. Come up out of the slums. Come up out of that frame of thought that God don't love us. Recognize that he's disciplining you. I got kids. Anybody else got kids? When your kids do wrong, what do you do? You discipline them. God's doing the same to his kids. The nation of Israel is on punishment right now. We've been spanked. We, we, we laid down as the lowest. We've been made the lowest. Now he's, saying, now, now, he's saying, now he's saying, get up. He's saying, get up and get right. And once you get up, I need you to sit down and learn these commandments. Sit down and be patient. Learn these commandments. Read. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. You hear that? Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. The things that cause you to go off, he said, gird yourself up. He say, 
He said, remove those things. Remove it. How you doing, my brother? We going into how, my brother? How you doing? What's your name? Reverend Miller. Reverend Miller? Yes. We going into how to bring our people from the squalor that they are in spiritually, mentally, right? And physically. How to come up out of our current estate. How to get back right with God. Read it again. Shake thyself from the dust. Shake yourself from the dust. Remove the grime that you picked up when you was made to be the lowest. Remove that. Remove the celebration of Christmas. Remove the celebration of birthdays. The Lord said, learn not the way of the heathen. This is what he's telling the children of Israel. When it's time for them to wake up and come from out of punishment, right? We out of punishment right now. Like slavery was the worst punishment that happened unto us. We out of that. Now that we're out of it, what do we have to do? We have to learn how to get back right with God. And this is some of the things we have to do. Remove the eating of pork, right? Remove the Sunday worship. The Lord say, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That hasn't changed. Christ didn't come to do away with the law. That's what Christ said out of his own mouth. But we've learned here a different way of living. We've learned to be Jehovah's Witnesses, to be Baptists. Right. You know, the Baptist church was started in what? 1830-something? 1830-35? What were we in, eight, in the 1830s? My brother, how you doing? Uh, we Israel united in Christ. We here to show our people who they are according to the Bible. You walked in on a small discussion concerning the Bible and how to get our people from where they are mentally and spiritually to a place where they were designed to be by God. Read it again. Shake thyself from the dust. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise and sit down. Arise and sit down. Uh huh. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. The bands of thy neck. The things that have you bound to sin. The Lord said, remove that from you. Gird yourself up. Mortify your members. Right? Discipline yourself. A lot of our people lack discipline. We got, a, we got a, a strong inclination to do whatever it is we want to do because it feels good and it's easy and there's nobody holding you accountable. That's why I said earlier, yes, it's my responsibility. It's his responsibility to look after his brother and sister and make sure that they stay in accordance with what the Lord wants you to do. Right. Ain't nobody doing that. And when nobody does that, we falter as a group, as a people, and what happens? Give me Judah 5 and 20. I ain't forgot the point about the order in the house either. All right? Judith chapter 5 and verse 20. The book of Judith chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their God. You hear that? If they sin against their God. Not honoring the Sabbath day when you're supposed to honor it. How you're supposed to honor it. That's sin. Because sin is the transgression of the law. The going against or the breaking of the law. If they sin against their people, what happens? Let us consider. Let us think. Shall be their ruin. That'll be their ruin. If there's nobody keeping these people accountable, they're going to stay in sin. And we can run all over them. They can be a spoil. They can be a, a, a paycheck for us. We can sell them bullets and sell them funeral homes. We can sell them pork and sell them doctor bills. We can, we can do everything to keep them keeping the system afloat. Everything we do re re revolves around keeping this system afloat. When all we have to do is on Saturday not patronize any of these establishments, patronize them Sunday, patronize them Tuesday, Monday. Keep it in its proper perspective, its proper order. Like these things can exist, but they have to be doing it lawfully. They could Popeyes can sell their chicken, but they can't fry it in, 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 in lard. They can't use their red beans and rice and put lard in it. We're not supposed to eat the pig. That's what the Father says. They can exist, but they have to exist under the laws of God. And it has to be an establishing body to make sure that these establishments do what? honor the laws of God. And that's what we're here for. We're here, we're set up to ensure that the laws of God 
gets adhered to. Because the Lord said in the end, every knee going to bow. It ain't just going to happen by happenstance. It's going to happen because people are going to stand up and say, this is the right way to go. This is the way we must walk. That's exactly the, in Ezekiel, you see the, 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 the waking of the dry bones. That's the dry bones standing up saying, look, this is the order. God used us as vessels to say this is what he wants. And this is not me just speaking out of my own thoughts. These things are written before I was born. I was born in 81. This was written way before that. This is what the Lord wants. I'm not making this up. We can all study this ourselves. During the time of what the Baptist church, when those religions were created, where were we? What were we doing? In 1835, what was our position in America? Do you know what we were doing in America in 1835? 1835, what were we doing? We were here. We were here. We were here as a people. But in what capacity were we here? Emancipation Proclamation didn't come to 1865. And then what was it? Oh, it was 63. It was 63, I think. 63 and then 65. You got the Juneteenth celebration. Because they finally, two years later, realized, hey, y'all ain't got to be serving slaves no more. But when those religions were created, they were created while we were slaves. And one of his missions was to keep us as docile slaves. Slaves that wouldn't rebel. Slaves that would obey their masters. So a lot of the teachings that a lot of these so-called white folks, I got you, that they taught, it was in opposition to who we are. It was in opposition to us actually rising up as a people. It was to hinder our rising. Go ahead. You had a question? Uh, we see as just three quarters of a person. We a whole person. Okay, we a whole person. But... According to their law, so, yeah. their law says something about our vote counts as three-fifths. It'll take, it'll take more than one man to equal up to one vote. But what they're really saying is, we ain't a whole human. We ain't a whole man. Right. So, and that's, that's an opposition to who we are. The Lord said we the gods on earth. But they claiming we so low, we nothing, and we three-fifths of a person. The Lord said, rise up out of that. Shake yourself in the dust. You bow yourself down as the ground. Go back. I'm sorry, continue to read that. I'm going to go back to that point, but read that. Let's finish that off. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. Celebrating Christmas is going to be our ruin. A lot of people go broke, buying gifts. A lot of people go into debt, buying gifts. I spent $500 to make sure his family and his family straight. They spent $500 to make sure my family straight. Why don't I just keep my money? What is Christmas? What is that about? It's another holiday for y'all to pump money into this system. It's not about the birth of Christ. Christ never celebrated his birthday. Right. When the wise men came, they came after he was born. And they gave him gifts because it's customary to exchange gifts when you're in need. They gave him frankincense, gold, and myrrh. They didn't come with a whole band of gifts and just flood them. It wasn't no Christmas tree there. Christ never said, hey, this year when we celebrate our birthday, hey, this is how we're going to do it. He didn't do that. He, he showed you how to celebrate Passover, or he showed you that he celebrated Passover. He was present for the celebration of the Feast of Dedication. You, you read about that in the hidden books called the Apocrypha. He showed you that he celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. These are how holy days that we keep to this day. Us in these purpose. We learn about those holidays or high holy days in, in here. Those days mean something. Those days stand for something. Those days represent something. The Sabbath day, it means something. It stands for something. It stands for the final rest that we're going to receive as a people when we finally stand up and shake ourselves from the dust and we come back to God how he want us to. All right? Keep reading. And let us go up and we shall overcome them. Let us go up and we shall overcome them. Are we overcome as a people? Yes, we are. Where's our national defense? Where's our economics? Where's our political team? Where's our ambassadors that can go out to these nations and, and trade and barter on behalf of the west side or the south side or the communities of Green Bay, Wisconsin? Like, where's our country? 
we are separated, we scatter, we destroy. And the Lord wants us to come out of that. Why are we destroyed? Because the nations know, keep them in sin. If you allow them to sin, the Lord won't fight for them. The God won't fight for them. He won't. He will allow them to be destroyed. Keep reading. What was that it? Verse 21. But if there be no iniquity. But if we finally be... stand up and we get ourselves right and there's no sin, what happens? But if there be no iniquity in their late nation, let my Lord now pass by. Man, think about it, bro. If they, if they, if they on their job and they not sinning, my Lord, please just pass by, leave them people alone. Read. Lest their Lord defend them. Lest their what? Lest their Lord defend them. Their Lord. We have a Lord. We have a God. Our Lord, our God is not everybody's God. That's why the tables look excused, look as skewed as it is. That's why we so on the bottom and everybody else is on the top. Because our God is punishing us. Because we disobeyed him. But when we obey him, hey, leave them people alone. And that's why we're here. We're here to say, listen, learn the laws of God. Obey God. Don't obey me. Don't give me no money. I don't want no money. All I want is you to read. All I want is you to see what's in this Bible and see if what I'm saying is factual or not. Look around and see if the condition we in is commiserate with what we read here. We ain't obeying God. Like I said, we kill our babies left and right. We sleep around with woman to woman left and right. We smoke, we defile our temple left and right. And nobody's holding a brother accountable saying, hey, you shouldn't do that. No, I mean, I can do what I want to do. Who you think you're talking to? You lame. No, I'm just trying to help you, bro. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm trying to give you the game, give you the information. It's up to you to run with it. And then after that, if you don't really, really want to hear what I'm saying, I'm going to distance myself. I'm going to go on to the next brother that want to hear because if you believe it or not, everybody's not going to be saved. Everybody's not going to hearken. Everybody's going to hear it because what you're seeing right now, it's happening all over the world. It's happening everywhere. Everybody's getting the opportunity to hear, but it, it's up to them to choose whether they will obey or not. Keep reading. And their God be for them. And their God be for them. We have a God. God isn't the God of everybody. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, our forefathers. Ooh, that was deep. That was heavy. That was heavy. Did y'all hear, you, you hear what I just said, my brother? What's your name? Rod. Rod. Rod with a D. Rod with a D. Do you believe that our God is just our God only and not the God of everybody? You don't believe that? That's not true? Read that again. What's, what's this saying? And then I want you to go to Joel 2 and 27. What's this saying? Unless their God... Before them, and we become a reproach before all the world. What did that just say? Um, he separated himself from the idol God. He said their God. <clears throat> their gods? Yeah. Let's read it again from the top. So what's going on here is, is there's an assessment going on. There's one nation, a rule of one nation. He's speaking with a rule of another nation. And he's asking, why are those men referring to the nation of Israel? Why are those men and women not coming down and paying me my homage, paying me my respect that I know I'm deserved, right? Why are they not doing that? What's their power? What's their strength? And the assessment is, read. The book of Judah, chapter 5 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. But if there be no iniquity in their nation. Read it from the top. Verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people. Error or sin in that people. And they sin against their God. Sin against their God. He didn't say if they sin against our God or if they sin against God, as it's an understanding of we ain't got to talk about other gods, but it's a God for everybody. No, he said their God. There's a separation. Give me Joel 2 and 27. That's 2 and 27, right? Joel 2 and 27? Okay. The book of Joel, chapter 2, and verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. You hear that? I'm the Lord your God, and none else. The God of Israel. 
So the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, that's who we descend from. We descend from Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. We are the Israelites. We've lost our identity as proofed through the scriptures in Deuteronomy 28, 37, 68, right? There's a lot of things that happen to describe that we would lose our culturally, uh, our cultural identity, our cultural sense, our uh, connection to God. Those things were prophesied to happen before it happened so that when it happened, we could look back and say, all right, this is the connection. This is who we are. You would say today that you're an African-American or Jamaican or Indian. What would you say you are today? Uh, classified as African-American. African right. That's a misnomer. That's a byword that the Lord never gave you. But that's proof that you are a child of Israel, right? Because you lost your identity. What was your identity before African-American? What did you speak? What foods did you eat? What customs did you keep? What was your arts? What God did you serve? How did we get here in this land? I'm asking you, how do we, yeah, how do we get here? Of course, through the slave trade. Through the slave trade. Want to read about that? Let's read about that real quick. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And then you was trying to show me something in Joel 3? No, no. No, no. Okay. Let's read that. I like that, though. I like that, but it'll probably dive more into that afterwards. But we still want to get to that order. Uh, my brother Rich, I'm going to still get to that order. I ain't forgot about you. Let me get to that order. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. You hear that? Egypt. Before you came in, I was explaining how the children of Israel were just taken out of Egypt. This is that same conversation that Moses was having with the children of Israel when he said, keep the commandments or you're going to suffer these curses. This is that same conversation. He's saying one of the curses is you're going to go back to Egypt. But the way you're going to go back into Egypt is on ships. If you know anything about the history of the Israelites, when they came out of Egypt, they walked out. There was no need for ships. Every place that they went to, they was able to walk. But this place, this Egypt, actually Egypt means something. Egypt means bondage or captivity. He's going to go to a precept to explain it. Say it again. Oh, that was him talking. Egypt actually means captivity. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, in verse 2. Uh -huh. I am the Lord thy God which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. out of the house of bondage. Egypt means house of bondage. So the Lord said, I'm going to send you back into the house of bondage. How? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships. How do we get into this house of bondage? Look at the back of your dock. It's on your flyer. Uh, open your flyer up. Or is it on the back? Right. Open the flyer up. The last page. What's on the back of that dollar bill? Pyramid. Pyramid is on the back of that. Why? These people understand what this place is. They understood what happened in this place. These people understand history. And they rub it in your face because they say you too stupid and too dumb to even read and pick up a book and catch up on what happened. Right. Yeah, I'd be stupid and dumb too if I was killed for reading for 400 years. I'd be, I'd be stupid and dumb too. But you know what? The spirit of the Lord is upon us so that we can do what? We can read and we can comprehend now. We can see these things that they're trying to hide in our face and, and, and make the connection. Oh, these people think they slick. These people think they funny. They're going to rub it in our face that we got y'all in captivity again. We're in the land of captivity. The Lord said we're going to come into captivity. How? Again, with ships. With ships. That's how the so-called African-Americans came into captivity on ships, right? By the way whereof I spake unto thee, uh -huh. thou shalt see it no more again. Uh -huh. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. You should be sold to your enemies, the Lord said. What happened to us when we got off them ships? We were sold. <laughs> we wasn't offering our services so that we could eat. Man, they forced us to pick cotton. There's historical proof of our young people, six, seven years old, picking cotton with their muscles ripping off. There's proof, there's pictures, there's documentation of the whips that our forefathers received. 
You too, sister. Hey, make sure you give us a call, all right? And it's going to be the best thing you ever did in your life is if you called us and show, and we showed you how to actually bring your family in touch with the Lord. All right? All right, sis. That's documentation proven that what? We didn't offer ourselves for slaves. We were forced as slaves. Right. Read that again. Thou shalt see it no more again. Uh -huh. There you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. You hear what the Lord called them? The people that we were sold unto? You hear what the Lord called them? That's okay. We can read it one more time. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Your who? Your enemies. We wasn't sold to our friends. Our friends didn't hold us in captivity. Our friends didn't maim and torture us and rape our mothers and fathers, separate our families. The Lord called them our enemies. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 